This is a Rogue Media Network podcast. This is Central Texas Life with Ann Harder. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Central Texas Life. And it is my great joy to have Dr. Michelle Manning on with us today because, um, Dr. Manning, you've got lots of fun things happening for um, for both women and men, mm-hmm. even though you are a board-certified obstetrician gynecologist, That's right. been delivering babies for 20, 20 years. 20 years in Waco next year. Yeah, 20 years. <laughs> Which is wonderful. And and, and your practice has been obviously focused on women, um, and, and you want to see kind of a holistic approach mm-hmm. to women's care. That's always been our goal was really about the physician educating the patient of the options and, and then what works best for you, what works best with your lifestyle, what, what are you comfortable with. And so when I opened my new practice, Complete Women's Care, we really got to do that again and didn't feel rushed and, and it felt right. It's like, okay, yeah, this is what medicine is supposed to be but it also gave me a little bit of free time and I started reading and and just trying to find alternatives for some of the most common conditions uh, concerns people are coming in with and so uh, one of the things that I hear about all the time is urinary leakage it's not yeah. sexy to talk about but it's real and it's real <laughs> for almost 50 percent of the population it's a lot of people affected um, yeah. <laughs> yeah and you know a lot of people don't want to have surgery for that a lot mm-hmm. of people um, don't have the time to commit to pelvic floor therapy although that works really well um, it's a one hour commitment for 12 weeks and they just can't set that side of time, especially my younger moms, they've got little kids and it's hard for them to. Right. And they're really kind of affected because yeah. there's been a lot of action. Yes. <laughs> action. A lot of action happening Drama. and things yeah. been <laughs> tearing and all kinds of things can happen yeah. and it, and it just affects uh, the healing and so yes, forth. Yes, absolutely. And so we found a, a device that specifically addressed uh, urinary incontinence and sexual function and thought, well, let's bring that in. Let's see what that can do. And it started making a big difference in a lot of people's lives. Uh, and the more I study it and the more I've gone to some of the conferences, they're using it for men too, because after a prostatectomy for prostate cancer, uh, some men have a weakened pelvic floor. It affects their ability to maintain urinary continence. And I thought, man, I'd really like to offer this to them as well. But I can't really convince even my husband to seek care at a place called Complete Women's Care. So, <laughs> and yeah, that is. We thought maybe we could open this up a little bit. So we kind of have an offshoot, a branch called Complete Wellness Care. Um, and as we add more services, we're finding that everything we're bringing in can help men as well as women. Yeah, now th- so this is a this is a chair. I saw it. I was able to mm-hmm. come to your and full disclosure, Dr. Manning is my is my physician as well. Um, you can did, say did, that. Did, I can't say that. Yeah, <laughs> didn't deliver any of my babies, but uh, anyway, but, but you a wonderful caring physician, and so just wanted to get that out there. But um, I was there for your kind of open house. Mm-hmm. A little party, VIP party, yeah. to, to see some of these things that we're talking about today. And it was this little fancy looking chair. Yeah, it, it's just a little round. Just a little round chair with lights on it. Yeah, fancy <laughs> lights. Kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, a little sci-fi. Um, well, it's electromagnetic pulse therapy. And so those electromagnetic pulses force the pelvic floor to contract in a way that's a little bit stronger than we can do consciously. You can do it yourself, Mm -hmm. but yeah. And it holds it longer. And so where a normal contraction would kind of be like a hill, this is going to take it up, hold it there longer than you can consciously maintain it and then let it drop back down. Mm -hmm. And because it fires so many times in a 30 minute session, you're looking at doing like 11,000 Kegel exercises in 28 minutes, which is great. Um, And you're not sore afterwards. Mm -hmm. Uh, But it helps not only synchronize that muscle so that it will all fire at once, but it puts enough stress on it in asking it to do these contractions that it begins to make the muscle fibers larger. And in some of the pathology studies even grew, forced that muscle to create new muscle fibers so that you take a pelvic floor that's kind of sagging a little bit like Mm -hmm. a hammock and you're pulling it back up tight for it to do its job again. Um, And that's seen on the ultrasounds, the MRIs that they've done in their studies. And it's making a big difference. 
Yeah, and is it the kind of thing that you would recommend for a pregnant woman to do or not? So you can't do it in pregnancy. Okay, because, I mean, that is... I hadn't thought about Kegel exercises except when I was right. expecting, and I was trying to be very, very good about Proactive, doing that, right? You know? So I talk about Kegels probably eight or nine times a day, um, <laughs> recommending them to my pregnant moms, that's to right. my postpartum moms. I don't even remember to do them. Right. And that's I, where it comes in. You're like, man, I, this is something I should do, and it just doesn't cross your mind. So there's kind of a variety of people that uh, you can use it for, but the two focuses are my immediately postpartum moms. They can start doing it at about 12 weeks. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in France, women get 12 weeks of pelvic floor rehab after a delivery. Really? Mm -hmm. It's just a, a – a known thing. Hmm. And it, it hasn't been a big deal here as much. And I, I'm sure it has to do with our health healthcare system and what we can afford to do. But that is just something that you do after you have a baby. And so I would love for this to become something that you do to maintain that pelvic floor health. So I don't have to wait until they're 65. And they're coming in and going, uh, you know, I have to wear a pad, I have to wear a diaper to go to lunch with my friends, because I can't hold that urine. So I'd right. love to treat them at 28. 25, 30, and then not, you know, have them develop those problems. And it, it seems to be, from the way you describe it, so effective that you wouldn't have to do a lot so it, the, or, the or studies How long term is the right so treatment. this it's a muscle right so right. it's um the studies were six treatments for 28 minutes mm -hmm. and what we were told um, when we started researching it, what we've seen to be true is we're building that muscle, we're strengthening it, we're reforming that pelvic floor, but it is muscular. We're not changing um, the fundamental tissue. So you do the six sessions, and in our younger patients, 28, 30, 35, theirs is maintaining kind of on its own. Um, non-invasive. If you are 60, 65, 70, we're seeing those women get really good results for about four months. Mm -hmm. If they're doing their kegels and they're maintaining that, that muscle, then it could be indefinite. Again, we all forget, right? And so those uh, ladies are calling in and doing maintenance sessions where they just have to come in and do one session about every four to six months to maintain that pelvic floor mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. strength. What is the cost of a session, uh, we sell it in a in a four or excuse me in a six session package mm -hmm. um, because that's what the studies were done. And if I'm going to quote something to someone, I want to provide right. them with that service. And it's a thousand dollars for the for the, those six sessions. Okay, but mm -hmm. not something insurance will cover. Or might generally it speaking, no. However, if you happen to have a, an FSA. Uh, or an HSA, health spending, health savings account, uh -huh. those kind of things. You could use it. You can use it because it's for stress urinary incontinence. So it's for a medical yeah. diagnosis. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Well, so then you walk a little further down the hall, <laughs> you come into another room. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I, okay, so, and I've got, I've got some of the, it's M Sculpt mm -hmm. Neo. Yeah, and the EM again, electromagnetic. EM, electromagnetic. And this is, and I, I did have this. <laughs> <laughs> that, I mean, it was really interesting. And tried it out. It was, I tried it out, and uh, it's like paddles, mm -hmm. and it and it sort of creates a contraction. Yep. So that same electromagnetic pulse that in the chair is firing those pelvic floor muscles, they've actually placed it into different different size paddles depending on what you're what you're treating, mm -hmm. and then they've added radio frequency heat as well, and so the paddle that's you were describing yeah, that's it's sitting kind of, on your abdomen it's about oh. that big around mm -hmm. um sits there and you get a wave of radio frequency heat and then you get a wave of electromagnetic pulse so you're building the muscle and then that radio frequency heats the subcutaneous fat up to just high enough to cause it to basically those kill those cells die off oh. so instead of emptying a fat cell like you do with diet exercise and weight loss that can Refill, refill. <laughs> exactly <laughs> with that piece of cake that you really seen want that, yeah yeah um these are actually broken down by the body and washed out uh -huh. and so the 90 day results are showing about 30 percent of a subcutaneous fat reduction and a 25 percent increase in muscle and so of course if you're doing it here you're looking at your rectus muscles mm -hmm. um they're showing because it's tightening those muscles and kind of pulling them together they're showing about a 20 to 25 percent decrease in rectus diastasis which is where those muscles kind of come apart mm -hmm. during 
frequently during pregnancy. Um, and so it's kind of pulling those closer together. It's not a surgical fix, right? but it's non-invasive. There's no downtime and you're decreasing it a significant amount for some women. And, and long-term results? Again, it's muscles, right? Okay. The fat cells won't come back. Those are yeah, gone. Yeah, because those are gone. Right. You can grow new ones if you <laughs> persist. Um, but those are gone. And then the the muscle tone is about the equivalent of what you'd get from a 12 to 16 week commitment to a gym. Mm -hmm. But then you have to maintain them. Or you can come back and see us and we'll do some more sessions. But yeah. so as long as you maintain it, it's there. Well, I mean, it was... I could feel it, and it, and I don't remember what number I got to. It was not extremely high because I I can be kind of a wuss <laughs> about such things. But um, the lady next to me, she was hilarious. She goes, "Oh man, sign me up!" I mean, she was she was really <laughs> excited uh, because the, the results are dramatic, and and for so many who diet and exercise and really work at it, still those love handles and it, it yes. just, they just don't want to budge. And that's the thing is that you can target these treatments. Mm -hmm. So you tried the abdominal paddle, right, right, which right, you can use right. on the abs. You can use it on the glutes to kind of tone the glutes and lift them a little bit. Yeah. Um, you can use it on the quads and the hamstrings. Um, but there's a, an edge paddle that wraps around the sides for those uh, love handles, if you will. A lot of the guys like to use it for that reason because you can't target it. You can work the muscle under it, but it's really hard to get rid of those fat deposits and yeah. inner and outer thighs and then bat wings. One of my girls calls them bingo arms. Oh, um, yeah. but it's a small one that arms. does biceps and triceps and it, it, um, <laughs> yeah, you know, gets those back in. Yeah, exactly. You, so you can really, you could really target that. Mm -hmm. It, those really? results are pretty impressive. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And, and again, a packaged kind of a deal to sort of, yeah, we, we do those depending on what kind of combination you're doing. Uh, each, pa each treatment is a particular price, but we have lots well, of different packages. Well, because you can, you can sculpt various mm -hmm. parts of the body. Well, and two things got my attention and kind of sold this for me. One was the success we were having with our pelvic floor chair that mm -hmm. was making such a difference. We're like, okay, clearly there's something to this EM treatment. Right. And then um, the second thing was I had another rep with a different – similar uh, device come in and he was really kind of giving me the hard sell. And I mm -hmm. said, well, you know, I already have this chair that I've been using and I've had great success with it. I'm really looking at their body sculpting. So it's the same company? Piece. It's the same company, okay. which is why I was like, okay, this is working great. Yeah. This should be similar. Yeah. Uh, he said, oh, that's what you're looking at? Never mind. If you're doing body sculpting, you need to buy that. That's the best one on the market. <laughs> I went... Okay, then that sold when the, when the, when the sales rep is like, you don't mind. want to buy mine. <laughs> right. I was like, all right, clearly. And they actually did win an award for the M sculpt Neo that, um, it's the number one in 2023, um, for body sculpting. So I think this particular device is for a couple of different people. And again, we're not a Medi spa. We can do some of the things that a Medi spa can do, but there's that medical focus. Mm -hmm. So for me, this is my mom's postpartum, my new mom's who are really trying to close that diastasis. They're trying to rebuild their abs, their core strength. So many postpartum women get back pain because they're lifting over a crib. They're right. leaning down. They're oh, yeah. picking up, right? It's all back work and their core is shot. And so if we can kind of help rebuild that quickly, maybe we can prevent some of that back pain. The second group of people I think are the patients who are in our aging population who are trying to work out, but they have back pain, so they can't work out their core as much, mm -hmm. right? Creates pain, so then the core is weak, then the back hurts worse, and it's just this Vicious cycle, cycle, right? Yeah. So if we can intervene there. Um, the quads and the hamstrings, like the statistics show that if you break a hip at an older age, you know, you've got a third of a chance of total recovery, a third of a chance of limited recovery, and a third of a chance really of dying in the yeah. next year because of complications. Right. So if we can prevent those falls by maintaining our core. For being, balance. Exactly. Yeah. For right. balance, being able to take that quick step mm -hmm. that would keep you from tripping over the rug. I mean, if we can do that, then maybe we can prevent some of these complications. So that's that second group. I've, you've got the body sculpting group, right? Like these are the people who are working out in the gym. They are doing the right things for their mm -hmm. body. They feel good, but there's just that one spot or those two spots that they'd like to kind of tweak. Um, so it works for them. And then the fourth group is really interesting. You know, we hear a lot about Ozempic and um, 
uh, Majorno and some of these weight mm-hmm. loss uh, semaglutide products, and people are getting dramatic results, which is awesome, no, that's true. Right, we're fighting the obesity epidemic, and I think They're it's a really wonderful too, thing. Though. They are. If you've yeah. ever heard of Ozempic face, um, it's where people have lost so much weight that their muscle tone is drooping, oh. and so you start to lose it. But it happens on all the muscle groups. Mm-hmm. So we've got people with this weak core that have broken down a lot of their abs um, and as they've been taking this medicine or their quads or their hamstrings. And so for those people, we can re- rebuild those muscles in a way that doesn't negate the weight loss that they've been trying so mm-hmm. hard to accomplish. So it's kind of a new group of individuals as those medicines kind of take off. And you do also offer a uh, the medical intervention for obesity with the uh, Ozempic uh, or something like that. Yeah. Well, uh, Custom Health Waco, it, we partner with them to okay. kind of work with that. And then uh, Dr. Haskett with Waco Gynecology is doing some hormone therapy um, that's really, again, trying to, you know, our little catchphrase is uh, live long, live well, live or live long, live better, live well. And like that's what we want right Mm -hmm, we don't just want to age we want to age well and be active i mean you and i talked about it you're like i want to be playing tennis right i'm 75 yeah i'm 75 right and so there's so many people who want that and we're just looking for ways and opportunities to maintain a healthy body maintain wellness Mm -hmm. yeah yeah i had a chance to visit with uh, dr haskett um there that day he also does botox Mm -hmm. i did not I didn't realize he was doing. He said, "Yeah, about ten years he's been." Here. But also, it is used. Is correct me if I'm wrong for uh, gynecological reasons. I mean, is is we there... we there are some patients who benefit from Botox therapy if they have painful intercourse. Oh, um, really? That can be used for that. Oh. We that that's a different mode, but we we use it for that. But we also use it for headaches. Um, I will tell you that I was one of uh, Dr. Haskett's first patients. Uh, as his partner, he came to me and said, you're going to be my guinea pig. And I was like, <laughs> I think I've been insulted, but I'm not I'm sure. I'm not sure. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure. And he said, you just have these these lines. He goes, and you rub your forehead when right. you're stressed. When you're and stressed. Mm-hmm. So I said, whatever, you know, you can try it on me. So he did. And truly overnight I didn't have headaches anymore because that's where I keep my stress is that the, frown right, when I'm and thinking the tension and, mm-hmm. right and so now you know five six months will go by and my husband will go hey uh you need to go see Rich stop. and I'm like stop <laughs> it he's like no it's because you're taking Motrin and Advil you know when you're coming home at night and I can tell when you talk to me you're rubbing your you're head rubbing so I know it's time and of course then I go get it and he's right and the headaches go away so yeah. there's lots of different reasons to use that again wellness not just aesthetics well and that's I think it's important to uh, to emphasize that you know as a you, you said you're not a medi spa what explain a little bit more about that what is a medi spa as opposed to a physician as you are offering things to help people in a non medical invasive type of way. Right. And so to me, a Medispa offers a lot of different options. Some of them similar to these, but all there's a lot of aesthetics in it. There's a lot of facials. There's right. a lot of um, cellulite treatment. Oh, and it's okay. really for looking good, feeling good. Right, right. Um, and I, I think there's a place for that. I appreciate that. There may be times in my life when I um, partake of that. But what I really want to focus on is wellness. Like, I, I, that's where I kind of want to keep my focus. We're not looking to become um, a Medispa with lots of different parts of the body that we're working on. We're focusing more on maintaining muscle, maintaining strength, uh, maintaining function mm-hmm, is mm-hmm. where our focus is. Right, right, right. The Really, the truly the medical aspect of it. Um, well, I want to talk a little bit to you in the time we have left about what led you into the specialty that you're in. And I, I think I saw you being interviewed and you said you knew when you were in high school, you wanted to be in the medical field, mm-hmm. but want, maybe wanted to be a veterinarian. I did. <laughs> Instead, I'm glad you did. chose 
I did. You I chose wanted, people. I did chose people. And the, the story is funny about that. And um, Dr. Judd, Bobby Judd, is a veterinarian uh-huh. here in town. A lot of people know him. And I wanted to be a veterinarian. I planned my science project in 11th or 12th grade around a white mice trial. Uh-huh. And I was in his in his office getting it signed off on. And I looked up and all these books were on the, the shelf, you know, uh, Physiology of a Horse, um, anatomy of a rabbit, you like just tons and tons of books of all these different things. And I went, wait a minute, I don't think I want to learn all those different things. You got lots I think of I'll animals. just do people. That'll be easier. <laughs> right. well, I don't know if How that funny. was true. <laughs> but in med school then, um, confirmed, like every female um, reproductive science, uh, all the pathology and physiology just really spoke to me about, I, I loved the female um healthcare. It just, that was what was interesting. And then I did my first rotation on, uh, the OB wards and I was sold. Like (laughs) I love it. Um, so that's been a great thing. And then just being able to open my own clinic and be able to spend time with patients again has felt really good and probably has, um, extended my career because it was, it was busy. It was hard. Oh, I'm, I'm sure. And, um, and you have had wonderful partners Mm, with you. Fabulous. My whole career. Right. And, and so I, Let's talk a little bit about work-life balance. You've got three Mm -hmm. wonderful kids. I do. They're growing up. They are growing up. (laughs) Actually, today is my middle son's 17th birthday, so we'll give him a little shout-out. Happy birthday, Caleb. Yeah. Um, But when I was just starting out, when I got to Waco, uh, I had followed Dr. Haskett around as a high school student and as a Baylor student just to kind of see, was this what I wanted to do? Mm -hmm. And he said, are you coming home when you finish with your residency? And I said, yeah, that's my plan. He said, well, come on, let's, let's put this all together. Good. So we did. And at that time you had two years to make partner. And so I got to the point where I could make partner. I said, you know, I don't think I'm going to make partner. I just had my second baby. I think I'd rather just work three days a week and have that flexibility. And they said, Mm -hmm. well, how about this? You work three days a week. You take the same call as we do and we'll, we'll make you full partner. Wow. Great deal. So when they were little, it was really important to be there for the class Christmas party and to be there for the Valentine's Day and Mm -hmm. and all the little things that Waco Montessori offers that I have just loved and my kids have loved. And so having those two set days off a week and being able to be present in the daily things was important. And then as the kids got older, you know, it's a lot more mental. You think you're exhausted (laughs) when they're little and you're chasing them and then they get older and it's the emotional and the mental stress of making sure you have the right answers or at least being there to listen to the right questions. Mm -hmm. And so I was getting home from work really late and not having any energy for the people that were the most important. Mm -hmm. And so then it became not a, I need the whole day off, but I need to have enough energy at the end of the day, whatever day it is Mm -hmm. to sit on that teenager's bed at 10 o'clock and Mm -hmm. have them say, well, I've been thinking about this and not think, man, I got to, I got to get some rest for tomorrow, but to be able to go, okay. And just settle in and, have that conversation so yeah. that's been really yeah I guess you know I have the impression you know if you're you're still delivering babies that I mean you're just always on call and you never know when you're gonna there's a little of that there's a lot of that and my <laughs> kids know it too so yeah. my 14 year old she's the only girl and she could run the household if she needed to <laughs> and she'll check in with me at the beginning of the week and mom I have this on this day mm-hmm. who's gonna pick me up if you can't make it you know so she's so she on knows. top of her schedule yeah. too yeah <laughs> She she knows. And my husband's oh, well, always been a great partner. Yeah. Um, well, and it, of course, he's a physician. Yeah. He's as well. Anesthesia. So, mm-hmm. Right. So, but he might, with anesthesia, does he, can he kind of plan things a little? No, Not really? because their schedule is based on the OR schedule. So we always knew that right. I was in charge in the mornings because he's got to be at the hospital so early to start all the surgeries. Sure, yeah, yeah. But he's got some more flexibility in the afternoon. So there's a lot of cell phones have been a wonderful thing because you can text and go, hey, I'm not going to be free. Can you go get this kid from there? Or can mm-hmm. you run this over here? And we've just made it work yeah. through these years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's, that's, that's amazing. It's awesome. Well, I like to end these visits with a little questionnaire. It's similar to the one the late, great James Lipton would use on Inside the Actor's Studio. So bear with me. And, okay. All right. What, Dr. Manning, is your favorite word? My favorite word? I guess, can I be cheesy and say one of my favorite words is super, super califragilistic expialidacious <laughs> because nobody can spell it. <laughs> That's where nobody can spell it. Uh, right. So what's your least favorite word? I 
this is tacky. I don't know if it's tacky or not. I don't like the word moist. I just don't like you it. You know you're not the first one to say I that. I don't like that one. <laughs> you of all people. <laughs> I know, right? That's why I'm like, I don't know if I can say that out loud. you got to deal with it. I know. I all can deal with it. I just don't want to hear the word. That is hilarious. <laughs> what turns you on creatively, emotionally, or spiritually? Um, we recently three years ago, changed uh, churches over to Harris Creek. And that has been just a tremendous blessing to yeah. our family. So that's been really fun. But creatively, I swear when I retire, I'm going to do nothing but arts and crafts because <laughs> I like to cook. I like to, uh, my mom is an excellent seamstress and has made prom dresses for me. I've never been able to do that with my daughter, but there will come a time where I make her kids clothes there for you fun, go. like fun yeah. stuff, because yeah. I really enjoy making things with my hands. Mm -hmm. Like, I catch things with my hands. Yes, you do. Uh, but I don't get to necessarily make anything with my hands. So yeah. that's kind of, that's fun for me. Yeah. What turns you off creatively, spiritually or emotionally? Um, I think the phrase, we can't do that. Yeah. Like, that just shuts, to me, that just shuts down all creativity in a room. When you come in with a problem and you're like, okay, how are we going to solve this? And it's like, well, we can't do it that way. Mm -hmm. Well, don't tell me what we can't do. Yeah. Tell me what we can do. And then let's figure out the best <laughs> of those options. <laughs> right. Um, what is your favorite sound? This is kind of funny. My daughter got chickens during COVID. Okay, so there's a tie. I love to sit outside and on my patio and listen to the chickens talk. Yeah, There's something soothing about that, and it's something I can get to day to day. Uh -huh. But probably my favorite is the sound of waves coming in on the beach. Oh, yeah. Like just peaceful and calm and yeah. eternal, and I love it. I have to ask you, you have a rooster? No, we had to get rid of that one. We lived in the neighborhood. Say, the not rooster your neighbor's not favorite a, sound. Right. He crowed one time. One time while I And we were like, whoop, and yeah, he was gone. He went to here. live with some friends. <laughs> right. Um, so what's your least favorite sound? Oh, there's a certain alarm on labor and delivery that engenders, mm, oh. like, rapid response from anyone. Oh, and kind so of a code blue. Kind of some a type thing. of code noise, yeah, yeah. That, that, that'll... You just, End your good day. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, okay, so you, you knew as a as a kid, you know, you wanted to work in the hobby. What other profession, though, would you have liked to try? I actually think I would like being a college professor. Like, I, I loved English. I loved history. I was a nerd, and my kids hate it when I'm like, but I loved that class. They're like, Mom, you loved every class. You're a nerd. <laughs> just stop. Just like, stop. You know what? You're right. I am. I'm a nerd. I'm not going to stop. <laughs> So I think if I uh, had to pick something other than medicine, I think I would have picked a topic or a subject, and I think I probably would have been a professor because I mm, think that's teaching. amazing. They teach a, touch a lot of people's lives as well. Okay, so what job do you know you would not want to do? No, thank you. And anything where I had to be outside in the heat. Okay. Don't like it. Don't like to be hot. Yeah. Work out every week with uh, Infinity Pilates. Uh -huh. Ray Snyder, fabulous Pilates instructor. Have been doing it for 12 years. And if you made me run and sweat, I would. I, there's no way I would do it. Follow right. through. Right. And she knows that. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Okay, one last question. When you arrive at the pearly gates, what do you want to hear God say? Oh, the phrase everybody wants, right? Well done, good and faithful servant. Yeah. I want him to feel like that I spread his love through my practice and what I do, and then most especially to my kids. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Well, again, this is a complete wellness care mm -hmm. of Waco. And tell them where you're located. We are actually in Providence Hospital in the medical building, mm -hmm. which is the one at the corner of the ER. Yeah, it's um, kind of a, mm -hmm. it's got, it got its own separate little entrance. We're on the third floor with the penthouse suite. We started out yes, on the first you floor. Are. We've moved up to the penthouse. Uh -huh. um, so we're in suite 312 um, at Providence Hospital. Okay. And uh, that's also where women's Mm -hmm. Where the wellness Everything center, is right, is right there. Yep. So, so what's the best way to get in touch with you? We can reach us by phone. Uh, the office for complete women's care is 254-236-2929. And for complete wellness care is 254-236-2928. And we also have a website, CWC Waco. Dot com And there is a wellness page within that that shows you pictures of the devices, um, kind of gives some descriptions of how they work and just more uh, more information. Yeah, it's definitely worth looking into for sure. Thank you so much, Thanks, Dr. Dr. Michelle Manning. And thank you for being with us for Central Texas Life. We'll see you again next time. Bye bye. Central Texas Life with Ann Harder is part of the Rogue Media family. Be sure to check out our other shows at roguemedianetwork.com. 
Please rate this show five stars on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, or anywhere you get your podcasts. Join us again soon for more Central Texas Life with Ann Harder. This has been a Rogue Media Network production.